Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> and uh, welcome to another edition of Ranch Talk. I'm Mike. I'm Erin. And this is our Wyoming Life. Um, thanks for everybody for coming out. I'm going to take a quick gander here and see. It's not showing me how many people are here, but uh, eventually it will at some point. Uh, thanks to everybody for coming out and hanging out with us tonight. We have had a ridiculously busy day around here, and we're going to get into that. Um, we've got a short three-minute video to show you about um, the twin calves that we weren't expecting that were born today, as well as uh, we're going to do mail call. We've got a couple of really cool packages that we're going to share with you guys that we received in the mail this week. We're going to talk about uh, gardening that's coming up. We're going to talk about calving, and of course, we're going to answer your questions. So thanks to everybody for coming out this evening. Uh, Mackenzie wanted to come over and say hi. Grammy is actually out um, living her life today. So we've got uh, kids hanging out with us and they'll probably be popping in and out as we as we go through this. This is Mackenzie. She is our seven-year-old. I don't know. And this is Moo Moo Cow, my cow. Yeah. Grace, do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi too? Okay. We're going to get Grace in here. <laughs> and she wants to say hi as well. There's all kinds of people saying hi to you right now. Okay. Go watch your show. Okay. okay. What about Lincoln? <laughs> I don't know where Lincoln's at. He's up there. <laughs> so anyway, we thought we'd get things started off today. Um, first of all, if you're so inclined, Super Chat is available on our videos, on our live streams, not on our videos, but on the live streams. Uh, you can Super Chat to us. You can get um, right I'm into the, the dog. The dog is now, <laughs> we forgot about the dog. Uh, usually she ends up getting vanquished, vanquished out to the garage uh, when we do live streams just because she is loud. She pants like crazy. So anyway, Aaron's going to throw her out there. So anyway, uh, like I was saying, Super Chat is available. Um, you can also support us on Patreon, and that always helps as well. So let's uh, just dive into a couple questions here right off the bat while we're waiting for Aaron to get back. Uh, first of all, thanks to everybody who said hi. I mean, there is a lot. Um, Brad Workman, um, well, this is a question for Aaron. She's not here. But uh, Aaron, how do you like your wheel? I've actually ran it quite a bit. I like it. Uh, it's a little, it's, it works you out. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a shoulder workout and a little bit of a back workout. But you get to pushing that thing around and you get, uh, you get going and, and uh, it's, uh, it works really well. For, for what it does. I mean, and that's the cool thing about it. So it's better than running a hoe. I'll put it that way. Uh, Nash Guy, who is one of our moderators. First of all, I want to thank our moderators as well um, while we're here. Uh, we've got Nash Guy. Uh, I think Matt is with us and Blake from Guy in Wyoming. And if you haven't checked out Blake's channel, head on over there and check that out as well. Uh, those three guys are moderating for us and making sure that everything stays copacetic. Family fun <laughs> family fun family super happy fun family time. rated <laughs> yeah uh, uh brad asked you how you like the wheel hoe i love it yeah i'm it's so far it's been really great i'm really excited to when we go outside and start gardening outside we got some different attachments to make planting easier and they have a ton more attachments that i want <laughs> they do they have a lot of attachments for that thing so uh, yeah so far i really love it um i think it's gonna i'm still gonna have to hand weed of course um you know in between the plants or you know, up close to like the root crops and stuff, but I think it's going to make it a lot easier to keep our rows weed free and we'll just go a lot faster. So yeah. I love it. Exactly. Um, why don't you answer a question? I'm going to throw the cat yeah, in the menu. Yeah, the cat too. The yeah. cat. All the animals want to come out and play when we live stream. Okay, so let me see if I can find a question here. What time is it where you live? It's 7 p.m. right now. It's still light out, which is weird. Yeah, it kind of, it really <laughs> threw me off. I was actually out driving down and checking reservoirs, and uh, I looked at the clock, and, and uh, first of all, there's a clock in the gator. So I'm saying first of all a lot today. First I don't know why. First of all, that's my thing today. So um, There's a clock in the gator, and I looked at the clock, and it said 507. So I was like, that's cool. And I drove a little bit farther, and then I was like, oh, wait, I didn't reset that clock, so it's actually 607. So I busted tail to get back here uh, to get set up, and... Even that's even after Matt texted me and said, live stream tonight, you know, are you getting set up for it? And I was like, yeah, sure I am. I'm out driving around in circles is what I'm doing. So, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, the time change is still, what, four days later, still. We're still adjusting. Still messing with it. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You want to answer questions or you want to, <laughs> what do you want, what's your plan? I'm sure these guys want us to answer a few questions. Okay. So let's, let's answer a few questions. Okay. Um, how do you like how farms work? Uh, because I saw you there. That's for me, money. I, I was actually, uh, we pop, Ryan was doing a live stream. We popped on um, just to kind of check it out and say hi. And, yeah, we and, like how farms work. It's, yeah. 
you know, they've got cows, but you know, we don't farm. So I, it's an, it's interesting to see the farming side of things and how they do things and even their cattle, you know, it's different everywhere. So yeah, we enjoy their channel. Yeah, exactly. His channel. His channel. Yeah. yeah him and, well, Travis is on there. He's Travis has his own channel. He does. You're right. So. <laughs> yeah. We enjoy it. Exactly. Why don't you pick a question there? Uh, what's your favorite part about the ranch from mad dog 22? And it said, Mike, what's your favorite part about the ranch? So uh, that's you. <laughs> uh, my favorite part about the ranch would be probably just the freedom of it, you know, to be able to go out. You know, if you want to get away, you can. You know, I can get five miles from anything if I want to. And uh, I can go sit in the middle of a field and do nothing, you know, that kind of thing. It's 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 nice to be able to just um, disappear. I'm sure Erin doesn't like it because she's like, where the heck is he? And then I'll get a text. Are you alive? I get that text a lot. I get worried. And, you know, this time you're with calving and stuff, like with you checking cows and stuff. I do. I, I can't watch you because there's hills. So I don't know always where you're at. But right. if I know you're going out to check cows, I do, you know, want to see you come back. You don't have to come in the house, but at least hear the gator come back. And oh, okay. Well, it's um, nice to um, know somebody's thinking about me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, uh, Wyatt Wilt Watson, uh, what's the weather like? It's actually been really nice here the last few days. Uh, we've had um, temperatures almost like in the, in the 60s. Yeah, in the 50s and 60s. It's supposed to rain tonight. It's supposed to get like a half inch of rain and then some snow. Yeah. And the snow reports varying from two inches to like seven inches. Yeah, so they've kind of got that all over the we'll place. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But yeah, it's supposed to start raining um, here shortly. So it's cloudy. Um, it was windy today, but now there's no wind and it was really nice. Exactly. You know, this evening. So yeah, um, Peacock is doing good. He is actually still living in the basement with his girlfriend now. We've moved uh, the the peahen down there with him, um, so they can have a little conjugal visit type thing going on. So they hang out together. Um, she actually hasn't. I've kind of been waiting for her to work her way up the stairs and be yeah. like, "Let me out." She's not. She doesn't care. She's yeah. she's actually happy down there. So um, they hang out together. They do their thing. Maybe she'll make a little nest down there. Maybe we'll hatch some peacocks down there. Maybe in the next week or so they'll go back outside. Yeah. Well, yeah. If the weather, if the weather kind of weather. strains out. I don't know how he'll do on snow and ice. Yeah. That, <laughs> the leg. the prosthetic leg that he wears. I mean, it's plastic, so it's it's slippery. slippery. And uh, so that's one of the reasons we put him in the basement of the shop was to keep him, you know, somewhere where he has some decent traction. Um, he gets out there, and who knows? I don't want to see him all sprawling out all over the place. And it's been icy. Like yeah. That we do finally. Most of the ice is gone, but it's been. It's been really icy. It's really muddy everywhere. Chasing that cow around today, trying to get her in was uh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Uh, speaking uh, speaking of that cow, well, actually, I have one. I have one more comment that I answer because I see this come up every live stream we do. Okay. What is your favorite Tom Hanks movie? <laughs> you know, we've seen that a lot, and uh, I imagine it's always one person asking, unless there's like a huge <laughs> Tom Hanks uh, uh, following that follow. There could be. I don't wow. know. Uh, my favorite. I, I, I'm a big fan. Apollo 13 would probably be my oh, favorite Tom Hanks movie. Um, I can watch Castaway, but there's like a lot of silence in Castaway, so I'm like, I'm just going to take a nap and yeah, I'll come back when things like, start happening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, probably Apollo 13. That's one of my favorite movies anyway, and it has Tom Hanks in it, so it works out well. Okay, so uh, to this morning, I went out to check uh, to, well, I didn't even, I was getting ready to go out and feed this morning. Kenzie I, had just got on the bus. Kenzie had just gotten on the school bus. I was running late, so I was getting ready to go feed. I look out the back window of the shop and actually just outside of what we call the triangle pasture, which is that pasture that's right behind the shop, um, there was a cow that was having a calf. And I saw her from the shop and didn't think much about it. I said, oh, I'll give her, give her a few minutes and let her have her calf and then I'll go out and check it out. Um, for those that don't know, the, the neighbor's bull got in with us. We're actually not scheduled to start calving until April. Um, heifers are supposed to be calving. Heifers are calving now. Cows are not supposed to be calving. Right. So we had the neighbor's bull get in with us. Uh, we actually sorted him off at branding. So he was in right around that time frame, which works out about right. Um, one cow has had a calf so far. Now we've had these twins that were born. Um, right after, right when I was watching her, a buddy of mine called me. So I'm on the phone with him. And I'm heading out in the gator and going out to check on her. And I get closer and find out that she's got, she's having another calf. Now, the problem was I was on the wrong side of the fence because I thought she was on this side of the fence. She was actually on the other side of the fence. So by the time I had actually driven around to get to her, um, she had had her calf. So what uh, what we did today was uh, we posted on, on Facebook and on Instagram as it was happening. So if you're not following us on Facebook, 
um, check us out on there because there's tons of things that happen in between videos. And some things happen that don't even make it into videos, obviously. Yeah. Um, so we try to get those things that are going on on Facebook. So we posted that to Facebook when we had the cast. Yeah, I was sitting with her because I came out and I was sitting with her just watching and Mike was feeding the cows. And um, so I just threw it up on Instagram and Facebook. So yeah, like yeah. us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, not that we like get, post stuff every day or every hour, but lots of stuff that doesn't make it into the videos goes on Instagram. Right. So, yeah. Um, so, and then we also posted when we got her back into yeah. the barn. So we put together a little video today, or I put together a little video today of what... I filmed um, a lot of the videos. Yeah, we, we take video of everything, and if it doesn't make it into a video, it doesn't. But anyway, a little three-minute video that we're going to fire up for you guys, and we'll, we'll kind of talk you through this um, on what's going on and, uh, and, and how it's going. So, so anyway, here is... Uh, I'm going to get rid of the chat window too, guys. There is the uh, the two calves that were born. Um, the one on the right was born first, the one on the left was born second. Um, they were within just a few uh, few minutes of each other. Aaron came out with the, and we got them loaded up into the gator, and we decided to take both the calves back to the barn. And the reason we did that was we're gonna bring in the mom as well, and that gets them into a uh, closer area together for them to bond. One of the problems that you have when you have twin calves is the mom will walk off and leave one of the calves and take one with her and then, then now you have a bum calf anyway or a cat or even worse you know you could have a calf that doesn't make it so we brought him in i got him tagged right away as long as we had him in there and then we decided to weigh him um, while we had him in so the the bigger one right about 70 pounds and then the smaller calf the second one that was born um, came in at right at what 57 so actually not bad calves for twins. No, really good actually weight wise. And then we go out into the barn and make brings one calf. And here comes the second calf. And I was trying to walk and hold the camera and look backwards and forwards because it's everything's like a it's winter time and so the barn's a mess. <laughs> it's like an obstacle course. There is, there's stuff everywhere. <laughs> so I kept you in frame for the most part, so that was pretty good. You did great. <laughs> It was somewhat tricky trying to uh, to navigate. So, and then Mike just always wants to check and make sure that they can stand, so that you can tell if there's no physical problems. And although they're wobbly, they both do get up and try and get their their legs underneath them. Yeah, they try. Um, you know, the other thing is that we're going to bring her their mom in, so we want to make sure that they're able to eat um, right away as soon as they, and they get that first milk, which is which has colostrum in it, which is vital uh, for a calf's development. We really want them to get that first milk. So even if we do end up taking one of her calves away, we can rest assured that both of them got colostrum and were able to uh, to get those vitamins and stuff that they needed. That little one did not want to stand up. No, he he's a little me. wobblier, yeah. but he did. He can get his legs underneath him, so that's a good sign. So we go out to get mom. Um, she had wandered off and decided to go eat with the other cows. So that's we brought her time. back. <laughs> and then this is something that's that's never happened to me before, is she decided to go out into the pond, uh, basically because she was tired of me chasing her around. And there I am, uh, really doing nothing, standing there wondering <laughs> what I'm going to do about a cow standing in the middle of the pond. We gave her a few minutes, and she did actually come in for us. It was actually pretty simple to get her in. Um, she she was really nice easy to work with. Um, super you, calm. Um, that stuff hanging out of her is actually after birth. She hasn't cleaned yet. Um, she has now, but uh, at that point she hadn't. Um, we get her in, uh, and and a lot of times that cleaning process takes takes place when the calves start to drink. Um, it forces her to release oxytocin, which then um, helps her clean out. Uh, and it contracts the, the uterus. Contracts the uterus and pushes every all that good yucky stuff out. So there she is in with her babies, and that's where they are now, actually, out in the barn and hanging out so let me bring the chat back in here maybe there we go and we're back up so that's how we spent uh, a, a good portion of our morning yeah it kind of threw everything else off for the rest of the day but we still got everything done we put out a I put out a video today right um, Aaron did put out a video finished today. recording the video today put out the video today got Grace to school got kids picked up from school 
It's a, it, Ran you know, a few and, errands while I was in town. Signed the, Lincoln up for preschool. You did? Went to the post office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it's, it's always, you know, and that's one thing we were talking about earlier today was it'll be nice when kids go back to school or when they're out of school. Out of school. Um, then, because right now we kind of have to stop our day in the middle of our day. One of us does and take Grace to preschool. And it'll be nice to... Um, when school's out, and then we've mm -hmm. got the kids at home, and then we can get them to work and, and all that kind of I'm just stuff. up to Grammy's house, and we can go to work. So, right. um, yeah, it was a super great surprise. You know, not we were not expecting it. The vet did not tell us we had any twins. No, so that and was yeah, so now I'm a little worried. Um, <laughs> and they're both bulls. I don't know if you talked about that. They are both bulls. Uh, if one is a bull and one is a heifer, then or one's a boy, one's a girl. We can't keep the girl because they actually share a blood supply. And the testosterone for the male will actually ninety like ninety five or ninety six percent chance that the female would be infertile anyway. So we end up not having to uh, being able to keep them. It's really not that big of a deal, but um, yeah, steers just, are heavier at sales time, so that works out. Yeah, so it's so. good. And they're both. You saw them both sucking mm -hmm. this afternoon. So yep, exactly. So, so now we'll just see if she keeps taking care of both of them, but the. They both got colostrum. If we pull one, we'll probably pull the smaller one. Probably. And then we'll have a bottle calf. Um, one nice thing, too, about having a bottle calf is we do have a cow that ends up losing a calf. We can try to graft that calf onto the cow. Um, sometimes they'll take them. Sometimes they won't. But we've got a few tricks up our sleeves to um, kind of help that happen, too. So Hopefully we don't have to do that. Hopefully we don't. Hopefully, I would love to go an entire year and not lose a single calf. Someone on Facebook was telling us that one year they had a couple of sets of twins, and they had like 102% calving rate. That is awesome. And then last year they had like 63%. That is not so, so awesome. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it would be great if we could have, you know, it's a bonus calf. Um, so it's, a, it's nice to have a bonus calf. Yeah. So. Exactly. Uh, what else happened this week? We actually took steers. Um, we took five steers over to Sturgis, South Dakota, to Sturgis Meats, um, to get those guys processed into your beef jerky. Uh, obviously, not all of them is going into beef jerky. That would be weird. But uh, we are getting beef jerky made, and we're going to have that on the website. Um, I did uh, put a thing up on Reddit about if anybody was a, a WordPress guru um, that could help us with the website because I'm thinking about changing the website so we can sell from it a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, if anybody's watching this and you happen to be a WordPress guru, just get a hold of me. Or even if you know more, you know, if you know anything about WordPress, you know, you know more than I do. So um, the jerky will be ready when? We're looking at like a month. Yeah. I mean, it'll be, it'll be at least probably three weeks before we get the beef back, at least three weeks, three right. to four weeks. And then we got to get our crap in the row. And yeah. Get organized we, so not sell. only did we take steers <laughs> over to Sturgis while I was there, I picked up the pigs, the pork, um, then, and brought that back. And we had to find room for all that. Um, that was interesting. Uh, we only it have always is. I mean, like we always were like, we don't have freezer space. How are we going to fit this all in? And then we unload the boxes and we're like, this is never going to fit. And then we have 9 million pork chops and this is never going to fit. <laughs> and somehow we make it all fit. It's not very pretty. Mike hates it when you have to like dig for stuff. Like, I, yeah, like I... the breakfast sausage is buried and there's just no other way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it gets super frustrating when you have to, you know, pull stuff out to take to farmer's market. But that's just how it works. Yeah. <laughs> but we always manage to make it fit. And hopefully we sell, we have farmer's market this weekend and we've been out of pork chops and bacon and breakfast sausage forever. So I think we hopefully will sell quite a bit and help the freezer situation. Right. So yeah, we have Before we get beef. And we did try the bacon last night. And it's you know, great. It, was, it was great. So like um, I haven't used the Moo Call yet this year. I plan to. In fact, I just got an email. Um, you have to. There's like a monthly or oh, yearly okay. subscription for it. I need to actually renew that before I can use it. It uh, must use. It uses cell service or magic or something. Um, but uh, I need to renew my my uh, my subscription to that before I can use it. So. Um, so yeah, I'll be using the Moo Call. Um, not sure how yet. We'll figure that out as we go along. But uh, we'll I think be... you should put it on our heifer. Well, you have to run a heifer into the barn because we don't have any tame heifers. But no. if you've got, you know, heifers can be in labor for days, or we think they're in labor for days. You should just put it on a heifer. Yeah. We have a super chat. We do have a super chat from Thank you. Pot Pot Potenzi. Potenzi. I love it when we butcher names. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Uh, I used to do it when I worked in radio. You know, people would call in and they'd do requests and stuff. Yeah. And I guess then I could, you know, if I was talking talk to somebody, to but you would get like email requests sometimes and, um, you know, you'd have to 
you know, do the Casey Kasem thing and breed it. And um, yeah, I would butcher them all the time. But uh, from Quebec, Canada, what do you think about speckled park cattle? And do you have some? Uh, I honestly don't know anything about them. Um, I don't even know what kind of cow that is. I would have to look it up. Uh, <laughs> we we have uh, Angus here, uh, red and black Angus. And honestly, um, when we came here, I didn't know anything about cows. So what we've learned has been here. And obviously... This is we, Angus country. It is very much Angus when you country. Go, when in fall, when you go to auction, it is red and black Angus. And a little bit of Charlet. And a little bit of Hereford. But that's mm. it. Um, so yeah. it would be really hard. We get asked a lot, like, why don't you do this kind of cow? Why don't you breed with this? Why don't you cross with this? Like, it would be really hard for us to change. Obviously, very expensive to change out our whole herd. But even if you started with the bulls, um, not to say that you couldn't cross an Angus with something better. Yeah. I mean, and we could do that at some point. Um, but buyers are not... We'd have to work with a buyer, kind of, almost, and do, like, a direct sale thing because they... They want they, they want, want Angus. Angus. Yeah, it's, 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 when you go to the sales barn, um, and in the video that we did back in October, um, when we're at the sales barn, I mean, it is black Angus. That is yeah. all you see. You do see some red Angus in there. Um, we had uh, some white cows out here at one point. Uh, they were a mix. I don't even know what they were. They were, um, yeah. they were Gilbert's cows. And um, every once in a while, they would throw a white calf which uh, they would actually sort off at the sales barn and sell that separate. calf separately. For like, Even though it was still like mostly Angus, yeah. they would, they'd sort it off. It was, so, yeah, yeah. And sometimes they even sort, like on the really big groups, like we're not a really big group, you know, when we go to the sales barn, but people that bring in hundreds of cattle, they'll even separate the blacks and the reds off mm -hmm. and do separate lots. Yeah. So. yeah, for those people that bring in 500 and <clears throat> all that, so. Yeah, I mean, David Harris says all... America is Angus country now. Angus did the marketing. They did. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, you know, that black Angus thing. They um, make good steaks, though. I mean, <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> is the new high tunnel still in a pile in the sales barn from Case Farmer? Yes, it is. <laughs> we actually have to inventory all the parts. And we have not done that yet. We have yet not either. done that yet. We've um, got to do that. <laughs> not yeah. tomorrow, because i got to get ready for farmer's market. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, I did want to tell you guys something. Erin... You should, you should congratulate her. She got her first speaking engagement yeah. uh, this week. Uh, Guadalupe, New Mexico. Is that where it was at? I don't remember. I don't remember either. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she's going to do, uh, I don't know what you're going to talk about, but you can talk about vegetables or something. Something. And uh, so that's very cool. Um, she's, I don't an authority on something. You're you. Fake it till you make that. it. <laughs> so yeah, uh, congratulations, Aaron. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty I'm cool. Yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna work out the details yet, but yeah. Um, and I'm not going to New Mexico. I'm just gonna do a Zoom call. Yeah, a Skype call <laughs> or, or Skype whatever or works. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's cool though. I'm super excited and really, really honored that they they asked me. So yeah. And last week I taught <clears throat> vegetables to the master gardener trainees here in our county. Um, so. I've been talking to all kinds of people about vegetables lately. There's yeah. 15 people taking the training class, and I really enjoyed it. They had to listen to me talk for like two and a half hours. They didn't get to ask questions, but I talked a lot. My time yeah. were done, I was like, oh. See, I live, the, the live stream is like training for that. <laughs> right. You're like, I could talk for hours, man. It was like two and a half hours of me talking. I had a slideshow and everything. It looked super professional. You did. <laughs> so. you did. so congratulations. That's pretty, that's a yeah, big thing. I you. think that's pretty cool. Nobody asked me to come talk to them. Well, not yet. So. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. You never if know. If somebody wants to do a Zoom call or a Skype call. <laughs> I did. Uh, I got an email today for uh, a magazine. They, they sent me an email and said, hey, we'd love to do a magazine interview with you. We feel like our subscribers would really enjoy your yeah, content. Yeah, if you would like to give us $300 as a contribution. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, so you want to pay? You want me to pay you to be in your magazine? I don't think so. Yeah. So, but it was it, the first half of the, the email. Really I was just great. like, oh, this is awesome. No. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh. All right. I saw a question I was going to answer. You did? I did. Um, someone asked, and I can't see it right now, so I'm sorry. I can scroll up for you. Um, asked, why do I use water bottles in the high tunnel instead of drip? So those water bottles are not for watering. It is because there is no heat in there. It's for heat retention. When the sun shines, which it does most days here, those water bottles get warm, we cover up the plants with real cover at nighttime, and the water bottles slowly release their heat. So it actually is to keep the plants warm 
um, not to, I don't water. I mean, I will like towards, <laughs> yeah, towards the end of the year and stuff. Like once I'm, once they don't need the water anymore, like if I walk by and there's a dry lettuce, like one lettuce looks dry or something. Yeah. I will, I'll open a bottle and dump some water on it. But, um, you know, I mean, so yeah, we drag them all into the high tunnel and then like we have to drag them all out at the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so that's the, yeah, that's the story of the, the, the yeah, they're not for watering. They're for heat. <laughs> uh, Ryan asked if I would come to a speaking engagement at his house. I will actually be in Dallas in when? August. August. If uh, you pay us, we'll come anywhere. Well, Ryan's not going to pay me. <laughs> I don't even know if Ryan would feed me. He'd be like, there's a McDonald's 17 miles that way. Have if fun. we get in your neighborhood. Yeah. yeah, we don't leave the ranch very much, but yeah, you're going to Dallas in August. I'll be in Dallas in August. So yeah, if you happen to be in Dallas in August, let me know. Um, are the kids going to be in 4-H? Um, no. Well, not right now because they're not old enough. Yeah. But eventually they will be. So um, kids are not at the grandparents' house. They'll actually right back there watching TV and being good. Yeah, don't say anything. Oh, my God. <laughs> you just jinxed us so bad. Yeah, they're watching a movie. Grammy is uh, visiting some family. Today. Yeah, she's over in South Dakota. No. So, is a PBS series about gardening and Aaron's future? Well, no one's asked me yet. <laughs> so if you know anybody at PBS, just, you know, shoot them my name. No. Well, doesn't each, each state has their yeah, own PBS? Yeah, each state has their so, own PBS. Yeah. So. No, we'll just keep doing YouTube videos for now. For now. It's all good. We don't mind doing it. If we don't mind doing it. We're so wrapped up in this. We oh, it's insane. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, um, other than Mike's trip to Dallas, we don't have any plans to go anywhere. Well, we're going to take a little short family vacation in June to South Dakota. I yep. might go to DC for a, a market farmer or for a market manager um, conference in September or October. We don't know dates yet. Um, I help run the farmer's market. I'm, a, I'm one of the market managers. So it's supposed to be a conference all about how to grow your market. That'll be good, thing. though. Yeah. You should go. Well, I don't know when the dates are yet, so oh. <laughs> they haven't right. released it. So, okay. Yeah. So that's the thing. I mean, yeah, we, we're hoping that this is the bad part about this, though, is as people ask us to travel and do things, um, we have to figure out how to do it. And, and you know. We're not opposed to it. Like, it's part of what we want to do. It's right. just the logistics of, we can't both, both of us leaving the ranch at the same time is super hard. And I'm tied down. Like. Mike can kind of leave in this. I don't really like it when he leaves during market season, but I have to be at farmer's market until, mm -hmm. you know, in the future, if I could grow the gardens and, and make more money and have more profit and have more square footage in production, I would hire somebody because I can't do it all by myself. And then they could go to market. But from middle of July till middle of October, every Saturday, I have to, I have to be at farmer's market. Yeah. And you're not, it's not only Saturday. I mean, you're locked up like for four Thursday, days. Thursday, Friday, but, yeah. Saturday. Or, yeah, and, and I, the gardens don't quit needing attention, so it's at least three days a week that take to get us to market. Right. So. Yeah. Here's a question we get all the time. Uh, Cody Dog, can you grow a shelter belt where you where you live, or is it too dry? A shelter belt is um, a group of trees, lines of trees, basically, that you could build around whatever you want to, around your house, around your barn. Um, basically to give you shelter from wind, snow, that kind of thing. And you can grow trees here, you know, uh, <coughs> contrary to popular belief, you yeah. can grow trees here. You just really have to baby trees. You would have to have drip line. You'd have to um, have drip to have them established, to get them established. Mm -hmm. And um, you can definitely do it and plant water, you know, not drought tolerant trees, but trees that can handle periods of wetness and drought. Um, and I would... You know, you either plant them in a low spot that gets lots of runoff and rain, or you drip irrigate them probably at least the first five years, I would say. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And you, you really, Gilbert, when he was alive, um, he had a tree that he planted probably like a mile or so from the house. And every day he took a five gallon bucket of water out to that tree. That's too much water. Every single day. Uh, well, Gilbert <laughs> would like water the heck out of trees, but- uh, That's too much water. I mean, that's that, you just have to baby them. You yeah. have to- And that know. tree's still alive. So- Yeah, right? it is, yeah, yeah, alive. yeah. And, you, and you, you sing them sweet nothings and pet them and do whatever you gotta do to get them to grow here. I always said that if, if 100 years ago, if everybody would have wandered through Wyoming and, and scattered seeds as they went, we would probably have more trees. Yeah. But uh, it's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty desolate. When you do see trees, you know there's water very close yeah. by, mm -hmm. which, you know, I guess is good if you're, you know, 
thirsting to death. I love the wide open spaces. Like I would love more trees like around like where our buildings and stuff are at. And like we've got, I've got trees planted in the yard. They're tiny. They're bare root trees other than like the one big cottonwood that we have. But you know, it just, they have to be babied. So, but I like the wide open space mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So. Yeah. We have family in Oregon and we went out and visited them. I don't like it. It was a while ago, and, and uh, yeah, there's there are way too, too many, many trees. trees. I mean, you couldn't see anything. It was scary, and like I felt claustrophobic, and it was yeah. kind of weird. So, um, Gary wants to know: Do we sell honey at the market? We don't. We don't do our own beekeeping. There's just a beekeeper that comes out and places boxes, right? And he goes to market, um, but he's his own, you know, own business. Yeah. Know, so. so yeah, he takes care of all that. We do get honey back. We get a little kickback type deal. More honey than we could ever eat. You know, so we give it yeah. away and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, I saw something. Uh, how many full time ranch hands work for you? None. <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, and yeah. I have no garden help either. I mean, like, we're it. Yeah. So, Mitch worked for us last summer. Mm -hmm. It does not look like a ranch hand is in the cards for this summer. Yeah. We've it's had, be oh, tough. you know, several years of drought and, you know, it costs money. Yeah. We so. had to buy hay again this year. And the bad thing is, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're trying to do this, is you have to, you know, you hope for the best and you prepare for the worst. So if we hire a ranch hand and, you know, that's great. Somebody to help us out. And then a tractor breaks. What do you do? Yeah. You know, now all of a sudden it's like, Oh man, I should have maybe held on to that money. Um, so yeah, there, I mean, there's some different options out there. I have gotten a ton of emails and phone calls and things from people looking for work um, that would love to come out and work. You know, there's, there's logistical issues to it too. You know, people volunteer to come out. Um, you know, you still have, you know, what happens if somebody gets hurt, um, you know, work, they don't have work in Scott because they're not getting paid, um, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. There's, it's just, it's kind of a mess, but I just heard a mommy come from the, from the family room. Yeah, I just heard a mommy. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, uh, it's an interesting thing. When do you switch to your straw hat? Um, when do I switch? Uh, May-ish. Yeah. When it gets hot. When it starts to get warm. Um. Warm I think I wore it. I'd have to look back, but I think I wore my black hat during branding. Did you? Last year. I don't know. Well, no, I didn't. No, no, there's, I, no there's no way I did. When he starts getting hot. Yeah. When he comes in and he's all sweaty, I'm like, it's time for the new hat, for the straw hat. Yeah, so, the straw hat is nice for a few weeks, and then it kind of, that one goes to crap too, but. Probably, yeah, so probably May, usually. Somebody a while back asked how big the, the high tunnel was. 30 foot wide, 72 foot long, and it's 12 foot high in the center. There you go. And that's how big the new one's going to be too. That's going right next yeah, to it. Yeah, very so identical. What's our? We're, we have it. Obviously, we need to do our inventory. We need to start building it. We need to have it built by April, not April. May. May. I want to plant May fifteenth. May fifteenth. Yeah. Because that's where tomatoes are going. <laughs> so. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, that'll be done then, and it's the same size high tunnel. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right next to it, just kind of a twin. Yep. So. Totally same thing. So. Yep. Exactly. Okay, uh, what are some other questions? Um, how many calves have you had? We've only had two. Um, we've had six. Six so far. Okay. Um, ever thought of an internship with someone? Yes. Um, again, it's just not something that we've ever done, so we have to work out the logistics of it. Yeah, Aaron so. could do it like an internship in the gardens. I don't mm -hmm. think, you know, there's too much threat of anything out there. But, uh, you know, it's... It, uh, you know, I don't know. You get somebody out in a tractor in your hand, and you got sharp things flying around, and it's kind of. What's uh, that, Mackenzie? If you I think need more milk. you need more milk, go drink your water from your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Not a milk. <laughs> do you ever feel like just like you're a bartender? You oh, I feel like all I do is feed them and water them. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do with cows half the time. And then chase after them, clean up after them. Yeah, no, I, I love them, but. <laughs> um, what was your reaction, Aaron, when you heard it was in a million pieces? Um, Canadian welder farmer. I was in Casper um, doing some market manager stuff. I was annoyed. And Mike sent me the video. Yeah. He sent me a short clip. I was annoyed. I was more annoyed because I had to pick it all up. What's up, Mackenzie? Just to tell you guys that Meow was my, my cat bite. Okay. Go drink your water and watch the movie. Leopard! Leopard bite. <laughs> okay. I'm like sweating here. I don't know why. Uh, Okay, more questions. Uh, we could take a break and do uh, do the mail call. Oh, let's thing do mail call. Like do that. Yeah, um, we're gonna do mail time. Mail time. So we have uh, obviously we have a post office box, and uh, 
Post yes. office box 667, Gillette, Wyoming, 82717. Exactly. It's in the description. It is it? in the description. I, yeah, it will be, hopefully. <laughs> um, so Yeah, so you guys can send us fan mail, and we super appreciate it, and it's fun. It is fun. Grace today was excited. She came with me, and she was like, no one ever sends us stuff. And I opened it up, and we had package slips, and she's like, oh, there's stuff in here. <laughs> Is there music with that? There is music. Oh. We can't hear it. No, we uh, can't. But there is music with it. <laughs> Mike made a little video. I did. Uh, <laughs> and I need to figure out how to work this program a little bit better. But anyway. <laughs> so basically, uh, yeah, P.O. Box 667, Gillette, Wyoming. Uh, we open them ahead of time, obviously, to make sure. And we, we have gotten more than this, but some of it was probably not... Uh, we filter. I mean, gosh, if you guys really start sending us tons of fan mail, like we can't just open all of it during the video. So that would all that would be all the video is. I'm totally almost Thanks. sitting in the chat window. There we go. All right. So this one comes to us from uh, Lakewood, Ohio. Eric. He read us a nice little note. He did. Uh, here you go, Mike. A treat for you. Don't forget to share with the family. Um, and and I, I couldn't read your writing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good, you guys do what you do for so many. Uh, have Aaron have fun have fun and let me know you got the package okay so Eric we got your package we got your package Eric. <laughs> and I think a few uh, live streams ago I mentioned that I liked Reese's Pieces awesome. but these are awesome because these can go in the gator when I'm checking cows and not when you're talking you right. know what's really good with Reese's Pieces is you, you put them in the microwave for a few seconds and then the peanut butter gets nice and warm melty Best melty, way to, melty candy. Best way to eat Reese's Pieces. So. Thank you, Eric, for Thanks that for one. the snacks. That's super awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at our next box here. This one's actually a pretty big one. Ugh. The post office lady was like, "Do you know what you got?" And I was like, "Well, I think the, I know. I knew what that one was." And then she's like, "Why do? You, what is this?" And I was like, "Well, we have a YouTube channel and we get fan mail." And she's like, "Oh." Well, you're like celebrities, no. and I was like, no. <laughs> Although um, when I took when I took Steers over to uh, uh, to there's a kid I thought, Sturgis. I thought I saw a kid. <laughs> when I took the Steers over to Sturgis, was that yesterday? He, that yeah. was yesterday. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, when I'm coming back, I stopped at a gas station to get myself two nasty corn dogs. And uh, some girl, this is actually funny, this girl in there is talking to her boyfriend, and she said, hey, you're Mike from our Wyoming Life, or you're that guy from our Wyoming Life. And I said, yeah, and I said, thanks for watching. And she said, well, our teacher makes us watch. Okay. Well, thank you anyway. Well, thank you anyway. Yeah. So anyway, this is from uh, Alaska, from Todd in Alaska. In Seward, is it Seward? Because there's no T in it. I don't know. Seward? Seward, Alaska. And... I'm, Todd is a photographer. So Todd, are you gonna get these in frame? Here? I don't know. This might be. Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, no, it's glary. Go. It's glary. There so we go. Oh, Todd it's sent glary. us some very cool. So he's a photographer in Alaska. To go this way. Go that way. This is our favorite. Yeah, that one's really cool. This one is called uh, No Fear, and I'm gonna read this because Todd sent an email okay, about there's one more picture. this one, and there's another cat up here. Some more and, seals. Uh, some more seals. I love these. I think they're amazing. This one, and in, in, sorry, you guys can't, you know, there's a big glare. There's our computer screen. Um, it's amazing, like yeah. in person. It is just probably one of the most beautiful pictures that I have ever seen. And we are definitely, definitely going to find somewhere to put this in our house because I love it. Yeah. So, um, so I asked Todd if there was a story uh, behind, this, behind mm -hmm. this picture. And he said that he was hiking along. Uh, along a river looking for a bear to, pho to photograph. Oh, and he found one. Which just sounds like a great <laughs> idea to start with. Uh, People in Alaska are kind of crazy. <laughs> I was on a rocky ridge looking down when our friend just appeared about 60 feet away. If you can look at the bear's eyes real close, you can see me in the reflection. I'm going to try and do that. You guys are totally not going to be able to see. But... I don't even know if I can see it. Uh, I knew if the bear wanted to get me, I was dead. So I decided to get the best photos so that Game and Fish could identify the bear that killed me. Unless he ate your camera. Maybe you wouldn't eat the memory card. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I got about 10 photos of that bear and another bear that was close by. The old boy just walked away. I had my big telephoto lens on, but I was so close to him that I actually had to back off the zoom. Uh, just to, or, or I would get something just like a tooth. I had uh, 400 millimeter zoom at my disposal and only had to use about 150 millimeters of it. 
That was the day before I started to carry bear spray on every hike. <laughs> yeah, that's so, probably smart, Todd. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you got some amazing pictures, and I thank you so much for sending those to us. Yes, thank you. That is awesome. So um, that is mail time. Um, or mail call or mail something. What did you call it? I called it mail call, mail but call. Um, that could easily be changed. I honestly don't know what we're going to call it, but that is awesome, <laughs> right? Those are really cool. And, and living in Alaska, that's got to be... I would um, love to visit Alaska in the summertime. Yeah. It's on the bucket list. I also want to go see, like, they grow giant cabbages. Everywhere I want to go, I want to see some vegetables or go to farmer's market, but they grow giant cabbages in Alaska because, you know, the sun's up all the time. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I totally want to go see that. So there we go. Um, <laughs> I had something I was totally going to say. All right. Thank you for all the packages. <laughs> Please send us more. We yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be. And this is, this is pretty, this is really nice, Todd. Yeah. Pictures are it awesome. It doesn't have to be. Um, you don't even have, you can send a letter, guys. I, you know, spend, what, how much does a stamp cost nowadays? I don't know. I don't know either. Um, 47. Obviously, we still answer our emails. I'm a little bit behind on email right now, but uh, we do uh, uh, answer emails and that kind of thing. So you can always send us an email. You can send us something through snail mail or as Aaron calls it, old person mail. Um, Mackenzie called uh, uh, a, a clock with hands an old person clock the other day. Um, yeah. I think they should get that from you, though. <laughs> so is it 50 cents really for a postage stamp now? Oh, wow. oh, my gosh. I just buy the forever stamps, and I buy like one book of stamps a year. So whatever they tell me to pay, I just pay. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, uh, corn dogs from a gas station are risky. I was hungry, man. I hadn't eaten all day because we had uh, the brand inspector coming out yesterday, and he he didn't show up. He showed up late. Well, I you had chick cows. I was planting. You had to clean out freezers. Brand inspector was late. No. Then I had to drive to Sturgis. Then I had to load of drive to Sturgis. Couldn't find the checkbook to pay for the pigs. <laughs> yeah. It was... That's another thing. It, was where, checkbooks it was where I told you the checkbook was. I didn't see it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, then uh, load up pig, uh, load up pork, bring that back, unload it, pack freezers. It was a long day we yesterday. We had dinner at like 7 o'clock. Um, Grace woke us up yesterday at 5.22 a.m. Which we... Like, it's not that we don't get up early, but we don't get up that early. Yeah. It was a long day. It was a long I day think yesterday. by like nine o'clock we were both like, we're over this. Yeah. I have nine. And then the bad thing is you go to bed and you lay there. <laughs> like I am tired. I know I'm tired. My body's telling me I'm tired. But My back hurts. There's some stupid thing on TV <laughs> that I have to watch, or some stupid website yeah. I got to look at, or something. You know, it's just insane. Yeah. It blows me away. Hey, we just got a super chat from Clark Carroll. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's awesome. You didn't even ask a question. Well. But thank you. That's amazing. We Maybe really... we should make up a question for him. <laughs> um, I saw one um, that I'll answer. Jerry Beaver, what is sold at your farmer's market until your vegetables come in? Only meat, crafts, and such. Our market does not open until May. Blessings to the ranch, Jerry. Um, I like Jerry. Yeah, Jerry comments a lot. I like Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Um, yeah, so a lot of that stuff, honey, um, myself, I have, we have goat meat. We have... We don't. I don't, know. No. But we have a vendor that has goat meat. Um, and then we've got myself with beef or us with beef and pork and we have a grass fed beef person. Um, yeah, crafts. We have a quilter that comes quite a bit. Honey, um, somebody that makes kombucha and sourdough bread. Um, we've got some Amish people that bring some really amazing baked goods and homemade egg noodles, which I love. And, and they make really good angel, oh, their angel, angel food, food cake, cake is oh, so God. good. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, we, and I have spinach, we'll have spinach and hopefully next month, like the lettuce will be ready. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, oh, and we have microgreens too. Um, the same person that brings, um, goat meat, she does microgreens, goat cheese, goat milk, um, and goat, goat soap, goat milk soap. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, you know, it's different than summertime and summer we'll have more vegetables. Right. We have quite a, actually surprising amount of variety there is quite so, a bit i mean it's, it's decent um we got another super chat we did a dollar 99 from uh amy pierce i want to be a gardener best plans for high yield i mean it all comes down to how much space you've got really yeah so i always think you about, go vertical I yeah guess. vertical um you know and that's what the tunnel allows me to do because the tomatoes can be strung and run vertically and planted 12 inches apart whereas outside with cages they have to be much further apart um tomatoes are good Lettuce is good if you have the patience to wash it, um, and it's a, a high rotation crop, so you can stagger your plantings. 
and you can, once a bed of lettuce has been harvested twice, or if it's head lettuce, like put some more lettuce in. <laughs> Same thing with radishes, like just keep planting them because they're quick days to maturity. Um, I don't do microgreens, but I've heard that you can make a lot of money on microgreens. Um, and I like root crops like beets and turnips and carrots and stuff just because they're easy to pick and easy to wash in a heart like bundle. Um, I don't grow green beans because I can't grow them and I don't like to pick them. Same thing with peas. Corn makes horrible dollars per square foot, but everybody wants corn. Yeah, but we have people that come to market that have acres of corn. Acres of corn. Yeah. But yeah, like small like garden space corn. Oh my god. Corn never really does very good. Anyway. You make 50 cents in a year. <laughs> And it takes a lot. Um, so yeah, we just plant a little corn, but yeah. So yeah, there's that question. Zucchini. Oh yeah, you make a lot of money on zucchini. Yeah, thank you very much for your super chat, <laughs> yes. by the way, Amy, that's awesome. Um, are coyotes a cause for concern in your area? I'm concerned, I was actually looking for coyotes today uh, when I, I drove was... down and took the reservoir. Um, I saw some tracks uh, and as we start to calve, um, coyotes, if they're hungry enough, they'll come in, they'll grab a fresh calf. And they'll try to. The cows get super protective, though. They do. And it's kind of, you know, you can, I've actually, in the past, I went to um, tag a calf and saw tracks there. And that's not good for me because now the mom is really bad um, by the time I get there to tag. Um, but, yeah, it happens. We've had, um, last spring, I think, we had a coyote, I mean, in the herd <clears throat> hanging out. This, this winter, we had one that was in the herd. Um, uh, kind of cutting through the herd, but we saw the cows were kind of going bananas over something, and 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 then we saw the coyote. So yeah, it's one of those things that we're always uh, always on the on the eye for, um, always on the lookout for. But the cows were, you know, just with any prey animal, you know, because cows have no defenses, they'll they'll protect their babies. They so there was one spring, I think maybe our first spring that we're out here, horrible snowstorm. Mike and I were out in the four wheeler checking cows or something, got stuck. Remember we got mm -hmm. stuck and we had to walk back. Like we couldn't get the four wheeler out. Um, and so we had to walk back to the house to get another four wheeler and we popped up over the hill and we were walking and Mike and I fed together that winter every single day. So they were very comfortable with both of us and those cows like freaked out. They didn't like, they didn't and like it, us walking. They didn't like the us field. walking. They didn't recognize us. We were too far away. They felt threatened and they behaved in just a, We'd never seen them behave that way. I mean, they, and there was a few, a handful of babies that had been born mm -hmm. and they just very much so protected those babies and moved themselves away from us. Yeah. Yeah. It happens. The, the big thing is, so when a cow goes into labor nine times out of 10, unless she's a dumb heifer, um, <laughs> she'll go off by herself. So now she is away from the protection of the herd. Coyotes will see that yeah. and they know what's going on if they're smart enough and they'll, they can cause problems that way. And that's one of the reasons that when a calf is born, I try to be there as quick as possible. And, and that's why we check so often and everything else. I mean, every, every animal out here matters, of course. And, uh, and we, it does happen. I mean, coyotes can take calves and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, Miguel lost a calf overnight from coyotes. So, I mean, it happens all the time. Um, we also have the occasional mountain lion that goes through here. Although, uh, up north, they did have a mountain lion that was going through killing calves um, up north of uh, Campbell County, up in that area. Um, we've had, uh, uh, we've got bobcats, but they're not really going to mess with, with calves too much. So the predator-wise, I mean, coyotes are kind of our big thing. Yeah. Um, other than that, we've got, you know, people that like to, you know, drive really fast and every once in a while somebody hits a calf, but. It's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. Yeah. Okay. More questions. More questions. Did you ever grow corn for silage? Nope. Not enough water and not enough nitrogen in our soil. Yeah. And we, we don't have a corn chopper. <laughs> yeah. um, the same thing. I mean, irrigation is tough here as well. We don't have, there's no river running through it. Um, we, if we were able to, um, to irrigate, we would have to do it off a well, which then requires state permits. And they're going to tell us no, because to irrigate, you're pulling millions of gallons uh, a week out of, out of an Maybe aquifer. Maybe like grass, like alfalfa, but not corn. Yeah. Yeah. It'd no, be tough. Super hard. Um, oh, somebody asked about uh, um, if we were going to do a video about the steers going. Um, Sunday's video is actually going to be about um, pork, uh, pigs, and how much it costs to raise pigs. But I might be able to squeeze something because we did go take steers, take steers and pick up pick up pork. So uh, we're going to actually get into like the numbers, uh, numbers behind pork and, and how much it costs to, to raise 
I thought somebody was pulling in, but maybe not. Um, how much it costs to raise and you know what you can actually make off of it. I've had a ton of questions once we started talking about doing pigs and people were asking you know, how much do you actually make off of them, how much can you make off of them and we're going to kind of dive into that. Of course we're going to be looking at our operations so if you have raised pigs or if you do raise pigs or if you're planning on raising pigs Yours could be totally different. Yeah, yeah. and that's a big fat disclaimer. But yeah, um, yeah it's gonna be different everywhere. Yeah, um, I also say this: like, we don't really, we don't make a ton of money, money off of any one component of farmers market. What I, you know, what we try to do at our booth is, you know, essentially offer a wide variety of stuff and like make money, off, make a little yeah. bit of money off of everything. But because we have beef and pork and baked goods and veggies and canned goods and stuff like it's just it brings a wide diversity of people in to our booth and you know they might come in for some lettuce and oh you have you know ranch raised steak right here let me buy a couple t-bones mm -hmm. we had one lady last year that came back every week and bought two t-bones once a week once a week bought two t-bones we you know, she'd buy in. a few other things oh this piece of cake looks good or this pie my husband really likes blueberry pie and so that's kind of the philosophy that we use at farmers market um maybe it's wrong <laughs> that's what we do <laughs> nobody ever said we were experts at anything i mean everything we do it evolves as we go along so you know yeah. one year something may not work it's going to change um some things that don't work we do every year for some weird reason but like what like growing corn. Why do we grow corn? I grow four rows of corn. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe five if I can squeeze them in. Yeah, I mean, I literally don't grow that much corn. So, um, I quit growing green beans. <laughs> you did. You, you, uh... We got another super chat. Yeah, that one's from Tammy. Uh, buy the kids some candy. Uh, I probably said that way too loud. Uh, <laughs> They're being great. Like $15 that. worth of candy, Tammy. <laughs> Holy crap. And Thank uh, you. we'll keep hitting you up because we got to pay for those braces too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Thank we you, Tammy. Really appreciate really, it. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, we'll tell Mackenzie and Grace that they can have some candy tomorrow and they'll be super excited. They will be. They get candy all the time. Their grandma lives 200 feet away. They get whatever they want. <laughs> I mean, not, you know, we have to tell grandma to knock it <laughs> off sometimes because, like, having your you know when you're when you're a kid your grandma comes and visits and that's awesome and she brings you candy and you have to eat those stupid hard things that she keeps at the bottom of her purse and you know whatever i would dig through my grandma's candy dish all year round for easter candy the sweet tarts in the shape of like easter animals all year round at my grandma's house really <laughs> no one ever ate them except for me <laughs> well i guess that works out well so yeah i mean with with grandma being 200 feet away it's kind of a a different type deal it's definitely they have candy they have candy they have lots of candy but we'll give them more <laughs> just because tammy says so we Thanks, can't tammy. get in trouble for it <laughs> uh, <coughs> let's see what else compo I, oh uh this is a question that you can tie this in uh david asked why no compost in the high tunnel but somebody else asked me about um if we have to bring in soil for the high tunnel how do you um create that good rich soil for okay. growing it so there's no like compost pile in the high like so we've seen I've seen multiple questions about why don't you use compost to heat your high tunnel. Um, I don't know how to do that. I mean, I could learn. I could watch some YouTube videos. Um, it's just not something that I'm doing. Um, we do put compost in the high tunnel. Um, all the gardens get aged composted manure every two years. I don't need to do it every year. I've found um, I get too many hot spots and it just doesn't. It seems like I have too much nitrogen if we do it every year. So every other year. So this year is a no, nothing gets compost this year. We'll add fertilizer as needed if I see it, if I see something lacking. Um, for the new high tunnel, we are going to, we have to scrape some of it to level it. We have to bring some dirt in. We've got leftover dirt from when my mom built her house. So there's some fill dirt, there's some topsoil. And then we're going to, I will add a bunch, I'll do a bunch of soil amendments. Um, I'm going to do some alfalfa cubes. We're going to do some molasses. We're going to do some peat moss. We're going to end some, end some composted manure in the new high tunnel. So we're going to do a lot of stuff. Um, but then after that, we just get on a rotation of it's every other year. We do the composted manure. Mm -hmm. So another super chat from Troy. Um, how do you figure out yearly budget for your farm? And I, that's a tricky question because um, well, first, you look at last year's. You look bills. at last year's. Yeah, you, you try to you try to look at last year, 
Um, you work from there. Obviously, you never know what's going to happen. Like I said earlier, like a tractor could break, and now, you know, you could be, you know, up the creek because you've got a fifteen thousand dollar fix on a tractor. I mean, you know, you could have an engine that blows up or you know anything like that. So, it's it's really tricky to uh, to figure it out. You know, we also have you know the hay situation. You know, we never know if it's going to rain. So, do you budget in, you know, seventy thousand dollars a year for hay? and then hope you don't have to spend it mm -hmm. or do you not budget that in and hope that you don't have to spend it i, I guess it's kind of a, a, a goofy deal but um i don't know it's it's, it's, it's more like what how much money is in the bank and what can be done with that money and you got to make it till october so, yeah that's how you know, usually you, kind of, you, you know. get your calf check you put it in the bank and then you 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 pucker up <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean some years we have stuff we have years that we can fix stuff and expand and then other years can't so yeah and that's what it really comes down to i mean um yeah you just have you have to put that money away somewhere so um humphrey have, family holsteins i'll answer this one for sure for uh have your chicks come in yet no um they're shipping april what is it, april 15th ish not on april 15th but like that week yeah we get ours late um just because they they usually don't make it um, through the yeah, cold, I've tried, to, I've tried to, sh you know, like I order from Cackle Hatchery and I always have had really amazing healthy chicks from Cackle Hatchery. If they have come and not been healthy, it's not Cackle Hatchery's fault. It's that we get like a blizzard and they spend an extra day on a truck in very cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. And Cackle Hatchery has an amazing uh, refund policy. So they've always been really great to work with. Um, so I have shipped chicks in February before and like done like a hundred chicks, right? Cause they, they ship with no heat or anything, but they heat each other. Um, and it worked out okay. But if I ship in April, like almost always they will come with no loss and super healthy and the kids have emerged. They let the cat out. Yeah, they let the cat out. So yeah, we just ship in April. I ship for like I, I ship for mid April, and it seems to work out better that way for us. So, unless we have an April blizzard, which we will. We, we always Shh. seem to have that April blizzard. Guys, go play. <laughs> We're almost done. They get bored. I can totally. They did it. really good though. I yeah. mean, we had seven fifty-seven. So yeah, we're, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get ready to wrap things up. Um, more pigs coming in July. Yeah, July we'll start, or August. We'll start the pig project again. Um, everything around here is a cycle. You know, a lot of times things change every year, but a lot of things stay the same. Kind of like us. <laughs> so um, gardening wise, I I'll just tell you what I have coming up. We're gonna we're gonna start. Um, more seeds in the basement. There's nothing growing down there right now, so it's time to... Tomatoes. Tomatoes and peppers need started next week. And then um, soon, cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower and all of that stuff, Brussels sprouts. So I should get my celery started now. Um, so yeah, we're going to start more seedlings. We're going to... I'm going to plant some more seeds in the high tunnel. Um, I had a video come out today showing you guys what I've been up to in the high tunnel this last week. So check that out if you haven't watched it. And I have more seeds to put in the ground in the high tunnel. We're going to build a high tunnel. We're going to prep the soil. We're going to prep some, or we're going to do some stuff outside as soon as the lake evaporates from my outside garden. Lincoln's fixing his car. Oh, you broke it, Dad. There you go. Okay. <laughs> what? We'll go put we'll it back go, in. We'll, we'll put it back in. Go play. Go to the other room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, um, that's what I have coming up. So, yeah, yeah more uh, stuff in the basement for now. There's another thing we were going we were gonna, we were gonna to hit on uh, briefly is as things heat up with calving, um, things start to happen. Our, our posting schedule might get shifted just a little bit. Um, it could happen. In a minute. Um, so, if you, if you're, what, what is our posting schedule now? We do Sunday. Tuesday at 5. Thursday, Thursday at 5 or at 7 if we're doing the live stream and then Sunday morning at 7 o'clock. If you, uh, because, you know, with calving and stuff like that, we never know what's going to happen. Um, if there is a video that's late, don't go thinking that we fell in a ditch and died somewhere. Um, or just probably chasing a cow around. We're probably just chasing a cow around. <laughs> so I'm also going to try to do a live stream um, with uh, some births and stuff like that. Uh, we're going to try to get that done. So you guys are either going to get like a ton of videos from us. Or you're gonna get no videos. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not gonna get. You're gonna get your videos. It's just, it's just they might be kind of, kind of weird. 
Sunday morning. Sunday morning is pretty much a gimme because I stay up all night on Saturday making Sunday morning's video. So I'll do that no matter what. Um, but yeah, as we get going into calving season here, we're going to be into night checks. Um, you're going to get to see some interesting things there. Uh, that's when you always see all the wild animals and things running around. I really um, want you to have to pull a calf, but at the same time, like, you don't want to, have, don't to want have to pull a calf. But if you do, you better video that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we're going to be using the thermal imager this year more. We're going to be using the MooCall. Um, we've got a few new uh, tools up our up our sleeves for calving that hopefully we don't have to use. But if we have, have to, we're going to have them. Um, some respirators, uh, things like that that we might be able to use with some calves. I don't know how to fix this thing. Push the button. Oh, yeah, that button. There you go. Isn't this fun? <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're going to have all that coming up for you. Calving will roll on for forever. a while. It seems like it goes on forever. But actually, it, it, when it's done, it's kind of like, well, I guess we're done. Yeah. And then we have a couple weeks off, and then and then we go into hang. Well, we'll brand. Then we'll go into hang. So... It's just really busy. Yeah. I love I I love daylight savings time. Like I hate it, but like I love it being lighter in the evenings. But it also is meant all week long that our it's like our nights don't quit because it's like what's well, daylight we can go do stuff. So I don't think we've had dinner before seven thirty since daylight. So we did tonight. We did. We ate huh. very fast. Lincoln's trying to steal my Reese's pieces. Um, here's a question from Brant Braden. Is there a chance when Kevin's season started, do you think you will still keep doing the project list? I'm going to try to keep doing the project list. Um, it might have some calving thrown in the middle of it um, because that's just how things work. But we do have stuff that we still have to get done. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we've got poop everywhere that we have to deal with. I literally, I took the tractor out today um, to get the cows away from the, the, the twins. And so I was like, well, I'll just jump in the tractor and I'll go get hay. And I about bounced out of the tractor seat. Yeah, it's, there's some there's some landmines out there. So yeah, that's one thing that needs to. There's 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 always stuff that needs to be done, and obviously we still have to do it. So might as well film it as we're doing it. We'll still put out the project list. Like I said, we might just have a calf in the middle of the darn thing just for kicks and grins. Just for funsies. Just for funsies. <laughs> so yeah, I knocked down all my manure yesterday. Our problem is it is so wet out, and we mm -hmm. like where most of our manure is at is there's groundwater at like eight inches so it is so wet out there you couldn't you couldn't knock down poop right now you yeah, tear up the yeah whole we tear field. up the whole field so we have to wait for it to dry out but we also have to wait for it to thaw and uh until then see one of the things if, if the if the triangle pasture the seven acre pasture that's right behind here uh was clean we could bring cows in and calve in that seven acres but it's not um, and that's not my fault. It's not Aaron's fault. It's just weather and cows doing their, no. their cow well, thing. Well, sometimes in the winter, like we're, we're getting off track here, but sometimes we get a few days where it gets really warm and the poop will thaw, but the ground stays frozen. Yeah. We didn't have that happen this year. No. So. No. And that's what we kind of need for knocking that down. Um, or it has to dry. So, so anyway, yeah, cows, <laughs> cow, the next pasture beyond that is another 400 acres. That might be where the cows are calving this year. And that's always fun because then you've got cows a long ways away yeah. which can happen so anyway we're going to wrap things up it's 803 we want to thank everybody for coming in, out and hanging out with us uh we topped the 300 mark again for our live stream Aww. so that's awesome you guys are, are love it we love the community that we're building um it's not only we're not building it you guys are building it. you guys are a huge part of it yeah. and um to be able to to do this um you know from just starting you know a few years ago with not knowing what we were doing coming here learning kind of what we're doing and then deciding to do the YouTube thing. Um, we never would have expected to be at this point. And that's all thanks to you guys. I mean, we put out the videos, but we could put out videos until we turn blue. And if nobody watches them, it doesn't matter. So we hit 21,000 subs this week. We did hit 21,000. So, so appreciate every, each and every single one of you guys. We're yeah. cruising right along. Um, let's thank our moderators really quick tonight. Uh, we had Blake from um, Guy in Wyoming was with us. Uh, check out his channel. It's Guy in Wyoming. Guy in W-Y. Yeah. I wonder if you search Guy in Wyoming, will it come up? I don't know. Blake, does it come up? Does it come up if you search Guy in Wyoming? <laughs> um, we also had Bob with us, and uh, that's Nash Guy, and Matt uh, hanging out with us, uh, moderating for us. His so, name is Matt. His name is Matt. <laughs> Matt, Matt. So thanks for everybody Thank for uh, coming out. Thanks to our moderators. 
Make sure you like us on Facebook. There's going to be a ton more happening there. Uh, obviously, like we said earlier, things happen on Facebook in between videos. And I saw some go live on Facebook or go live on Instagram, and we can probably do we that. We can probably do that. I've never done it. It'd be, it'd be interesting to check out. So uh, we're going to go ahead and say good night, and thank you once again for uh, hanging out with us and uh, come along with us, explore the ranch life, escape the ordinary, and uh, that's it for our Wyoming life. Good night.